What's up everybody? I'm excited to do this video because it's going to be a very educational presentation because I recently set up an online coaching page on my website. If you go to my website on the top you could click online coaching and you could see that you can do a video chat session with me for an hour where I'll answer any of your questions to help optimize your health and fitness, right? So I had a call recently and I'm going to give you a rundown of the things that I suggested to him so that you could get an idea and a feel for how these sessions go and at the same time you could learn about my thought process in regards to how I go about certain things. All right, so let's begin. David is 38 years old. He's five foot six and 178 pounds, which is a bit on the heavy side for sure for his height and he works a high stress job and he goes to the gym once a week sometimes twice a week but basically once a week all right and he eats out almost daily all right so now before i continue any further i just want to say that whenever i'm gonna make a suggestion usually i'm gonna try to make a suggestion that's not gonna be a a drastic change in someone's lifestyle. I want to try to give the smallest change possible to make the biggest impact because those small changes, those small tweaks can go a very long way. All right. So whenever he told me that he eats out almost daily, that was a red flag, right? Because whenever you eat out and you don't cook your own food, there's a few things that go with that. Like, first of all, Restaurants themselves and fast food establishments, their food tends to be very heavy. The food tastes really good when you eat out because oftentimes they're using a lot more butter and oil than you would at home, right? And of course, at fast food restaurants, there's a lot of fried food like french fries and whatever. And the other problem is that the portions are huge, right? We get portion distortion. The portions we are given and that we are supposed to finish are actually too much and they're actually so much that you can oftentimes share it with another person and when you share it it's when it's ideal right so on the plus side though of eating out if you're eating at somewhere that's well established it's actually really easy to know how many calories that dish has because it's in the database right so one of the things I, su I, I suggested to him, I found out that he had never done any uh, calorie counting in his life. So I thought this would be a great opportunity for him to try it. So to raise awareness on how much he's actually eating, right? His number one goal to me was that he wants to lose weight. All right. So to have success with this, you know, I wasn't about to say, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat at this hour, you know, without making, without making any restrictions for what he wants to eat. I told him to download MyFitnessPal, which is an app where you could log the food you eat and it'll easily count how many calories you've been eating that day, right? And the whole idea is if you eat less calories than you need, eventually you lose weight, right? So I told him, keep eating whatever you want, but count your calories because this is going to raise awareness and make you aware of how much you're actually eating and how much you actually need. All right. And whenever he ran the app later on after the call, he downloaded the app and he put his information in the calculator and the app said that for his, you know, activity level, for his gender, for his height, for his age, the calculator figured out that to lose one pound a week, he would need to eat 1500 calories a day. Okay. So I told him, try to do that six days a week and six days because, you know, in reality, it's not the end of the world. If you don't eat in a deficit every single day, it's more so important that you are in a deficit for the week or for the month overall. Right? So if you could get that goal of at least six days a week, you know, that's good, right? And the next suggestion I had for him was instead of going to the gym just once a week, try to push yourself to just go a little more twice a week, three times a week, right? 
And one of the ways that I know to help keep yourself accountable is to have a log. And, you know, a vis if you're a visual person, like many people are very visual, it helps so much to just print out a calculator or just use any piece of paper and just like draw a calendar if you want. And every day that you go to the gym or that you work out or do any strenuous exercise, draw an X over that day. And over time, it's very visually gratifying when you see a bunch of X's, you know, a bunch of X's. It doesn't have to be every day, but you know, it helps a lot because you can see visually that when there's empty boxes, oh, it's like, oh, I haven't, I haven't been going. I need to go and f I need to go, right? Basically, or you could just keep a simple log where you just like write a list out. Just write the date and what you did that day and just have a line by line log like that. But a calendar works really well, especially if you put it on your fridge or somewhere in your room that you see every day on your door, somewhere where you are always going to see it, right? And the other goal that he had was increased endurance. He said that whenever he goes on hikes and stuff or goes for a bike ride, he doesn't want to get tired, right? And I asked him what he does at the gym and he says that he uses the elliptical, which I told him that's great. The elliptical machine is awesome. It, it's awesome because it's very easy on the joints. It's a low impact exercise, much like bicycling and swimming. It's easy on the knees and you know, lo if longevity is your goal, which it should be, so you could live a long, healthy life, then the elliptical machine goes a long way toward being your cardio in a safe manner, right? So he was just using the elliptical machine in a linear fashion at the same intensity for 30 minutes. I told him, instead of just doing just the steady exercise, why not do high intensity interval training, right? And he wasn't aware of what this was, so I, I laid it out for him and I'll you know, share it here as well. Basically, you warm up for a few minutes and then you're gonna alternate between going really hard for one minute like almost as hard as you can, either increase the resistance or increase the pace or increase the incline. Uh, this can apply for any exercise or any machine that you're using. And then after that minute, do it at a low intensity for one minute. So you keep alternating one minute really hard, one minute really light, over and over. And you do this for like 15 minutes and then you do a cool down. Okay, so in the beginning, you might only be able to do this swapping back and forth a few times and you're gassed out by 10 minutes, but eventually you'll be able to do it for 15 minutes, for 20 minutes, and this is a much more efficient use of your time rather than just doing it in one steady intensity, right? So next, he also wanted to have an improved physique and I told him that you got to increase your strength if your physique is to look better, especially if you're going to be losing weight because you don't want to just lose weight. You want to lose fat while minimizing muscle loss so that it's a high quality weight loss, right? So that's why it's extremely important to do some strength training and he was doing none. So I told him, okay, let's keep it simple. I'm not going to throw like 10 exercises at you. I'm going to say, I want you to master the basic body weight exercises of push-ups and pull-ups. Most people are very familiar with these exercises. And I told him, take a video of yourself doing these and then send them to me after. Because whenever we do these video chat sessions, you get a month of email support after where I encourage you to send me videos so I can form check you and critique your form. And, you know, we can improve upon things. And then from then, I was able to give more suggestions on how to go about increasing the number of repetitions that he was doing for each exercise and, you know, how to do it in a proper manner so he avoids injury. So a quick recap. His goal was fat loss, right? Which you're able to do that best by improving your diet, right? And for him, counting his calories worked out great. He's been doing it for a month straight and he's totally motivated. He's lost a lot of weight already and 
it's just like a snowball effect of good, you know, feel good gains, right? And then the other thing is he wanted improved endurance. So the high intensity in interval training is much more efficient and he's able to now also do pull-ups and push-ups to help build his upper body, right? Because upper body, he was neglecting it, all right? And finally, I told him, if you don't want to go to the gym once in a while, like if on that third day you don't want to go, you really just don't want to go to the gym, okay, don't do nothing, do something, right? He had a bicycle, so I said, you know, pump the air in your tires, get a tune-up on your bike if you need to, and go, go for bike rides. He lives near the mountains too, so there's a lot of hills that he can utilize as a form of training, right? And then I found out he loves swimming. So I said, get a pair of goggles from Amazon, find your local pool, find out when the public hours are, and just go. And then he also lives pretty close to the beach. And so I told him, you know, after you got some swimming in at the pool and you feel like you're a much stronger swimmer, go to the beach once in a while and just like jump into the ocean, right? Utilize the ocean, get some sun, get some ocean water, that brisk ocean on your skin, you know, it feels good. The salt water is good for your skin as well. Utilize the things that you have so you can connect with nature, right? And then the other thing I told him to do was to find the local yoga studios and just, just go. Like go take one class once in a while and just keep going until you find a studio and a teacher who you really connect with, who you found that their style really worked with you. Because it's a nice way of filling in the gap. Yoga fills in the gaps that uh, strength training don't provide, right? Yoga has a meditative quality to it that a lot of other exercises or sports don't. And of course, it helps increase your flexibility and improve your posture, right? And plus it helps build that mind-body connection in ways that other less complex exercises don't. So you have a lot of alternatives. Go to the gym two or three times a week. And if you don't want to go on that third time, do something else. Variety is the spice of life, as I, as I say oftentimes. All right, so I hope that was educational for you if you want more information or you want one of these sessions with me so that it's personalized and customized to your needs uh, you just go to my website ontronic.org and go click online coaching at the top and you could pay for it right there and you can email me there's a contact form at the bottom if you have any questions and that's about it I hope you like this video. If you have any suggestions or questions or feedback, if you found it educational or anything like that, please let me know. And thanks again, and I'll see you in the next upload.